Ever enjoyed a good laugh with an old-time comedy movie? There's this gem from 1974 that's an absolute riot. Directed by Mel Brooks, it's set in the Wild West and tells the story of a small town called Rock Ridge. When the sheriff steps down, they bring in a new one, Bart, who happens to be black. This stirs up quite the commotion among the townsfolk, leading to all sorts of funny and unexpected situations. The humor in this film never gets old. It's been a favorite for many generations. When was the first time you saw it? Any memorable moments from watching it? Feel free to share your stories in the comments below. There's plenty more to discover about this hilarious movie. So, get ready for a wild ride of laughter and surprises. It's one you definitely won't want to miss. In the realm of classic comedy, there exists a timeless gem that takes viewers on a wild ride through the Old West. This uproarious portrayal of frontier life is a testament to the comedic genius of its creator. Filled with clever humor and memorable performances, the movie is a celebration of laughter in the face of societal challenges. Despite the potential for controversy, this comedic masterpiece continues to bring joy to audiences, reminding us of the power of humor to transcend time and cultural barriers. It's a movie that captures the essence of comedy and satire in a way that only a true master of the craft could achieve. And in today's world, where political correctness often stifles creativity, it stands as a shining example of the importance of pushing boundaries and finding joy through laughter. Acquiring a copy of this film before potential censorship becomes a reality is a wise choice indeed. Laugh more, hate less. In a scene around 1 hour and 22 minutes into the movie, the music playing as Lily Von Stepp's poster appears is a snippet from a tune in Mel Brooks' earlier film, The Producers. Despite the common belief that films released in February, April, or October lack confidence from studios, this movie defied expectations by becoming a blockbuster hit upon its wide release in February. It held the title of the year's highest grossing film until 2018, when Black Panther claimed the spot. The song Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling from High Noon inspired Brooks to have Tex Ritter record a track for the movie, even though Frankie Lane had a hit with the same song from an earlier film. In three really famous movies, Madeline Kahn played important roles that people still remember today. She was in Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, and The Muppet Movie. People love her performances in these films, and they've become a big part of movie history. One of these movies, which starts with a scene similar to a famous old western movie, has a moment that really sticks in people's minds. In this scene, there's a big guy named Mongo who does something unbelievable, he punches a horse. This moment is something viewers never forget. These movies have had a big effect on audiences, and they still entertain people today. They show how great movies can be made. In a scene towards the end, a man not part of the movie wandered into the shot. Despite attempts to shoo him away, he persisted, standing next to a light pole as characters streamed past him. Mel Brooks, the director, asked him to move, but the man didn't understand. So, Brooks left him in the movie after having him sign a waiver. In another scene, a wanted poster seen in the sheriff's office had previously appeared in the John Wayne movie Rio Bravo. Mel Brooks' wife, Anne Bancroft, named the film. Originally titled Tex X, inspired by Malcolm X, Mel changed it to Blazing Saddles after Bancroft loved the idea. Madeline Kahn, in her final public appearance on a talk show, showcased a poignant moment. Battling terminal cancer, she delivered a stirring rendition of I'm So Tired, a song from the film. The irony echoed as she graced the stage for the last time. Interestingly, Anel, a bass rock group, emerged in 2006, adopting the name Candigram for Mongo from the movie. This musical homage to Blazing Saddles demonstrates the lasting impact of the film, transcending its era. A linguistic nuance surfaces in the movie. The Yiddish term is hed up, meaning push or stuff serves as a double entendre. Notably, some TV broadcasts have tactfully replaced it with SHHH, illustrating the delicate dance between humor and cultural sensitivity. In subtle ways, Blazing Saddles continues to influence various facets of popular culture, from touching final performances to inspiring the nomenclature of a rock group and navigating language choices for broader audiences. Based on an incident from his childhood, Cleavon Little's character aims his gun at his own head to save himself. Mel Brooks once held a store worker at bay with a water pistol he stole, similar to the scene in the movie. Despite being told to cut offensive scenes, Mel Brooks refused, having final cut written into his contract. Slim Pickens, who appeared in the film, has also been part of other significant films selected for the National Film Registry. In a famous comedy movie from 1974, something interesting happens about an hour and 27 minutes into the film. 
At a famous theater called Grauman's Chinese Theater, you might notice something neat on the sign. The movie was originally going to be called Black Bart, but they changed it to Blazing Saddles later on. Gene Wilder, who's a big part of the movie, has been in lots of other important films too. This movie was even chosen by the Library of Congress to be saved for future generations. Gene Wilder's role in it shows how much this funny movie mattered to American cinema. In this movie, the director often has actors and actresses speak directly to the audience. At around 56 minutes into the film, the voices for the drunk who is kicked off the stage and the German soldier who joins later are both provided by the director. Additionally, there was another character named Black Bart, a Muppet who appeared in a series of skits on Sesame Street involving the alphabet. Black Bart was a black-clad outlaw who only entered the saloon when he wanted to demonstrate a letter to the viewers. However, these skits were discontinued in the early 90s. In the world of old-time movies, there are a few interesting things to note about this particular film. You might remember that funny candy delivery scene well. That idea actually came from a company called Western Union way back in 1959. And get this, even now in 2023, you can still use that service to send sweets and other gifts to folks. Now, there's this character named Gabby Johnson, played by Jack Starrett. He brings a special something to the story. What's cool is that the same actor later played a totally different role as a mean deputy sheriff in another famous movie called First Blood. The guy who made this film, Mel Brooks, had a bit of a surprise after it came out. See, there's this famous actress named Hedy Lamarr, and she wasn't too happy about a character in the movie having a similar name to hers. So she took the filmmakers to court. It was a bit of a weird twist in Mel Brooks' career, but they sorted it out without going to trial. So, all in all, this movie is not just a fun watch, it's got some interesting stories behind the scenes like Candygram's actors playing different roles and even a little legal drama. Gene Wilder and Cleavon Little quickly became friends on set. Since Little was a Broadway actor, Wilder would give him pointers for acting in front of the cameras. Mel Brooks has appeared in five films that have been selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. He has also directed three films that are in the registry. When Governor Lepitomane is passing around paddle toys in lieu of pay, he calls his staffers by name Frankie, Johnny, Patsy, Kelly. These are references to singer Frank Lane or possibly Frank Sinatra, television comedian Johnny Carson, and actress Patsy Kelly.